3.1 practice problems. The diagram opposite is a molecular model of a gaseous diatomic element that is just above its boiling point. Intermolecular forces between gas molecules will cause them to condense into liquid phase if the temperature is lowered. Which of the following best describes how the model is limited in its depiction of the phenomenon? Uh, so I don't know what diatomic element this is. And so uh, A being, it does not show how hydrogen bonds are constantly forming and breaking and reforming, et cetera. Um, if this is not diatomic hydrogen, and hydrogen doesn't hydrogen bond with hydrogen, since this is all the same thing, that does not make any sense. Does not show how the interactions between ions and their induced molecular dipoles result from a net force attraction between molecules. This is a diatomic element. Diatomic elements are not ionic, so that does not make any sense as well. Um, it is between two of the same atom. Uh, C, it does not show how the interacting permanent dipoles of the molecules result in a net force attraction between the molecules. Again, it's the same atom. We are not going to have any dipoles or any charges at all. And finally, it does not show how the temporary fluctuating dipoles, the molecular electron clouds will result in a net force. So this is gonna be uh, describing London dispersion. And we do not have any uh, fluctuations between the um, electron densities on either side of the dipole. So we are going to have those temporary dipoles and uh, those temporary dipoles are the London dispersion forces and those are not depicted in that model. The electron cloud of hydrogen fluoride is smaller than that of uh, diatomic fluorine. However, hydrogen fluoride has a much higher boiling point than that of fluorine. Which of the following explains the dispersion force model of intermolecular attraction that does not account for the unusually high boiling point of um, fluorine? So um, for fluorine-fluorine, the only uh, dispersion type that we're going to have since this is two of the same element it's going to be london dispersion however for hydrogen fluoride we we always have london dispersion we also are going to have hydrogen bonding because we have hydrogen present and either nitrogen oxygen or fluorine present so um Looking at these, um, we're looking for things that uh, does not account for the unusually high boiling point of hydrogen fluoride. Uh, fluorine is soluble in water, whereas hydrogen fluoride is insoluble in water. Uh, that doesn't have to do with my uh, dispersion uh, at all. The fluorine molecule has a greater mass that also does not have to do with uh, my dispersion at all. Liquid fluorine has a weak dispersion force attraction between molecules, whereas liquid hydrogen fluoride has a strong ionic interactions between the hydrogen and the fluorine ions. So this is going to say that we have a dispersion only. This is going to be ion, ion interactions that would explain why we have a uh, high boiling point. Then finally, liquid fluorine has weak dispersion forces attraction between molecules, whereas uh, liquid hydrogen fluoride has weak dispersion forces attractions and hydrogen bonding interactions um, between its molecules. Um, the problem here is going to be the weak dispersion. Uh, that is not going to be true. Um, we have very uh, strong dispersive forces because um, we have uh, a very uh, electronegatively different, two different elements that are hanging out here. And the electronegativity difference is such that this would actually be an ionic compound instead of a um, 
covalent compound, even a polar covalent compound. So it's going to have very strong uh, dispersive forces uh, because we have uh, strong differentials in those electronegativity. So since that is incorrect, D is going to be my choice. Four different liquid compounds in flasks are represented above. The table below identifies the compounds. Flask C shows the most particles in the vapor phase. Which of the following is not shown in the model, but, re but best represents or best explains why flask C must contain pentane? So my boiling point is the lowest for pentane, meaning that I am going to have the easiest time going from a liquid to a gas, which means that I'm going to uh, have low intermolecular forces. I'm going to have very weak uh, stickiness in between the molecules. And so things, which of the following is not shown in the model, but is best explains why flask C must be pentane. So um, the random motion between the particles and the liquids, that doesn't explain why it has to be pentane. Um, the relative speeds of the vapor particles also does not explain why it has to be pentane. The strength of the intermolecular forces between particles in the liquid, that is why the boiling point is so low and why we are able to vaporize. And finally, the structural formula of the molecules and the vapor of each flask. Um, I don't care about that right now. What I care about is that pentane has the lowest boiling point, which means that it has the weakest intermolecular forces between the particle when it is a liquid, and therefore it is going to have the most vapor above the liquid when it's contained in that container. So flask C is going to be my best representation. In the diagram shown below, which of the labeled arrows identify hydrogen bonding in water? So hydrogen bonding is a temporary bond. So that means that it is not going to be a solid line. Instead, it's going to be a dotted or temporary line here. Um, so I can get rid of choice A because that is not a hydrogen bond. That is an oxygen that is bonded with hydrogen, but that's not a hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bonds must be between hydrogen and either nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. B, that is between an oxygen and an oxygen. So a hydrogen is not bonded at all. Hydrogen cannot hydrogen bond with itself. Hydrogen can hydrogen bond with an oxygen though. So D is going to be my choice because this is the only temporary bond that is shown that is between hydrogen and one of the three uh, elements that it can hydrogen bond with. In which of the following uh, liquids do the intermolecular forces include dipole dipole? So I am going to be looking for something that is going to be polar. Um, this is extremely nonpolar since it's two of the same element. Uh, carbon and hydrogen have a nonpolar bond as well as this being a symmetrical uh, compound, meaning that that is also going to be nonpolar. Carbon and fluorine do have a polar bond. However, this is a symmetrical molecule. So that means that that is not going to be a polar compound overall. This has um, both polar bonds between carbon and fluorine, and it is asymmetrical, which means that I am going to have higher density of electrons throughout the molecule. So that is going to be a polar compound and therefore will have dipole-dipole interactions. The London dispersion forces are weakest for which of the following gases under the same conditions of temperature and pressure. So London dispersion forces are going to be um, relying on the temporary dipoles that are going to exist on any molecule. And uh, we can increase the, temp the likelihood of temporary dipoles by increasing the number of electrons that are possible or that are present at all. So even though xenon is a noble gas, it is going to have uh, a higher likelihood of creating a stronger London dispersion forces 
London Dispersion Force because it does have 54 electrons. So you have a lot of electrons to keep look after, and those electrons could very easily make its way to one side rather than the other and have a quite high uh, charge differential between the two sides of xenon. Uh, the rest of these are all going to be um, nonpolar bonds and they are all diatomic. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna look for who has the least number of electrons total. Hydrogen, we have um, this bonded hydrogen, the diatomic hydrogen has a grand total of two electrons total. Um, oxygen, we have 16 electrons total. Fluorine, we're going to have 18. And nitrogen, we are going to have 14. Remember that this is not for the individual oxygen, it is for this molecule, it has 16 total electrons. And uh, the larger the amount of electrons, the larger the likelihood that they are going to create a very large charge differential over that molecule. So hydrogen being the smallest molecule and it having the smallest number of electrons that can create that charge differential is going to be my choice uh, for what is going to create the weakest London dispersion force. Thymine and um, adenine form a base pair, base pair in DNA molecules. These two bases can form a connection between two strands of DNA via two hydrogen bonds. Which of the following diagrams show the correct representation for the hydrogen bonding denoted by dashed lines between thymine and adenine base pairs? In each diagram, thymine is shown on the left, adenine is shown on the right. The bases are attached to the backbone portions of the DNA strands. As a um, reminder here, um, we are looking for um, uh, hydrogen and some sort of bond between nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. And again, the uh, thymine is going to be on the left and uh, the adenine is going to be on the right and the backbone is following that there. Um, so for option C, I have hydrogen, hydrogen bonding with hydrogen. That's not going to be an option, so I can eliminate that one immediately. Um, then looking through these, um, I see a hydrogen bond being formed between oxygen and nitrogen. That cannot happen. And so I am between these two as my uh, choice for what is uh, going to um, hydrogen bond. The more polar the hydrogen, the more likely it is to hydrogen bond because that makes it stickier. Um, so this hydrogen is coming off of a carbon that's a nonpolar bond. So that's going to be a less sticky hydrogen than this hydrogen that's coming off of nitrogen. And then these oxygen coming off of, um, sorry, this hydrogen coming off of this nitrogen is also going to be stickier than this hydrogen coming off of this carbon. So since these hydrogens are coming off of nitrogens and are therefore going to be more electronegatively charged um, because they have had their electrons pulled away from them more from the by the nitrogen than by the carbon that was represented in choice A, I'm going to choose choice D. Knowing absolutely nothing about what um, the molecule actually looks like or anything like that. Which of the following is the strongest type of interaction that occurs between atoms within the circled area, the two molecules represented below? So we have um, hydrogen and another uh, element represented, hydrogen bonding can only occur between hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. Um, hydrogen is represented with one of its possible hydrogen bonding, and hydrogen bonding is going to be my strongest interaction, um, my strongest dispersion type. So that is going to be my choice.